My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet flow far off him That hails a new creation Through all the tumult and the strife I hear the music ringing It finds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comfort die The Lord my Savior liveth What though the darkness gather round Songs in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost call, while to the refuge clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the cloud grows thin. I see the blue above it, and day by day this pathway smooths, since first I learned to love it. Hello everybody, and a virtual welcome inside our beautiful church, the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul. At this time of year, we'd normally come together as a whole school to celebrate harvest. We would fill this beautiful church with our songs, our prayers, and our stories. But we can't be together in here at the moment. So this is our first ever virtual harvest service. To start us off, though, I'm going to show you the word harvest. And what I would like you to do with your teachers is pause this video in a moment and try and notice as many words as you can get from the words harvest. How many words can you get from the word harvest? Pause the video now and have a go. Well done. I wonder how many words you got. Well, I'm about to tell you about harvest in the form of a poem. And I wonder as I tell you that poem, whether or not some of the words you came up with from the word harvest will appear. Have a listen and notice if your words appear. We have so much food here. We are fortunate to be blessed with the best of this world. But just for a moment, let's take time to think of all of the rest of this world. Harvests are time to show that we care, to bring gifts of food to the table to share. With food that is plentiful, and vast in range. Our harvest still isn't complete without taking time to say thank you to God for giving us all that we eat. Harvests are time to show that we care, to bring gifts of food to the table to share. Let's thank God for heat from the sun up above, for the rain that God sends us for free, for vegetables, fruit, and for all things that grow on the land and that swim in the sea. Harvests are time to show that we care, to bring gifts of food to the table to share. We have so much food here while some people starve, so let's always try to behave with gratitude, kindness, not hiding away from people we should try to save. Harvests are time to show that we care, to bring gifts of food to the table to share. This Thanksgiving moment 
just cannot be missed to thank God for bringing this lovely harvest. Well, hopefully that poem gave you a good idea of what harvest is all about. Harvest is a time to say thank you for all the good things we have. It's a time to stop and consider where those things come from. And it's a time to stop and consider how do these beautiful fruits and vegetables grow? And we don't often think about that in our busy lives because not many of us have to rely on growing our own food to survive. We're really lucky and we get to go to the shops. And what that means is that we can easily take things for granted. We can stop or forget to realise how lucky we are. So to help us today in our Harvest Church service, think about where things come from and how they grow. We're going to use a simple vegetable. And your teacher's going to hold it up now. Well, hopefully, you all noticed your teacher holding up a potato. One of the most simplest vegetables, but maybe one of the best. Well, what can a potato teach us? Well, maybe quite a lot. I don't know about you, but during lockdown this year, when we had to stay home and stay safe, I heard the most fantastic song, and it's called Thank You Baked Potato. And it taught me how to stay safe with the coronavirus. Let's watch it now. Baked potato changed my life. Baked potato showed me the way. If you want to know what is wrong from right, you must listen to what potatoes say. Wash your hands and stay indoors. Thank you, baked potato. Only visit grocery stores. Thank you, baked potato. And if you want to have a better day, you must listen to what the baked potatoes say. Keep your distance, make some space. Thank you. Remember not to touch your face. Thank you, baked potato. And if you want to have a better day, you must listen to what the baked potato say. B-A-K-E-D-B-O-T-A-T-O Baked potato. That's a really good song, isn't it? So there you go. Maybe a potato can teach us things, how to keep safe at this time. Maybe you could remember some of those messages as we head towards half term. But do you know, that made me think about potatoes and it made me think about harvest. So today, we're going to have that potato teach us a little bit more. Potatoes can seem ordinary, can't they? They can seem even a little bit boring. But do you know, there are so many things you can do with a potato. You can mash them. You can boil them, you can bake them, you can make them into chips, you can even do my favourite thing with a potato, you can roast them. Maybe there are other potato recipes you know, but there's also other things you can do with a potato. Did you know a potato can help you shine your silver? Did you know you can use potatoes to paint? And did you know you can use potatoes to remove rust. And apparently, if you need to clean your goggles when you're skiing, you can even use potatoes then. So aren't they amazing? But I want us to think about now where they come from and how they grow. So in a moment, your teacher's going to pause me and you're going to think about this question. Where do potatoes come from? Well, I wonder what answers came up in your class. But hopefully you concluded that potatoes 
come from potatoes. You can plant one potato and you can get 20 more. How amazing is that? Well, how then do they grow? Well, I'm going to give you a little gardening lesson. What you need to do to grow potatoes is to prepare the soil, remove the weeds, remove the stones, maybe put some fertilizer in the soil. Then you need to do something called chit your potatoes. You put them in an egg box and you wait for shoots to sprout and it just happens. Then you plant the potatoes and you need to do that by digging a trench, placing them in the grounds with the shoot pointing upwards, covering them with the soil, and then you need to wait for two to four months. Green leaves grow, it just happens, and the plant flowers, and that just happens too. And of course, we get sunshine and rain. And then comes the best bit, and here's that word. We harvest the potatoes. We dig them up, and from that one potato, we get lots and lots and lots. So there's my simple explanation of how to grow potatoes. But the amazing thing about harvest, when we think about potatoes or vegetables or fruit, are that actually it just happens. We can do our part to help grow the potatoes and grow the fruit and vegetables. But the rest has nothing to do with us. Christians believe there is a greater power at work. Christians believe that God helps create the wonderful things that we get to enjoy each day. So harvest is a time in the Christian church where we stop and consider how things grow, how it all happens, and who makes it happen. And the Bible tells us that God makes it happen. God is the creator and designer of everything. He makes it work. He keeps everything going. He holds it all together. And that's why we celebrate at harvest time. That's why we think about others who are less fortunate. Well done if you brought in a pound coin today to help somebody less fortunate. The earth God created produces the things we need to live, doesn't it? Harvest reminds us that God provides for us. And it reminds us that God loves us. And in the church, people respond with their lovely harvest festivals and they celebrate and they thank God. Now I'm going to tell you a story and it's a story about a lady who, despite harvesting a lot of vegetables one year, she didn't feel much like celebrating. Well, this story happened during the First World War. And the lady that we're going to learn about was a young woman. She hadn't long been married to her husband. And then the war broke out. And he like all the other young men in the village, had to go off and fight for his country. And the young woman was left all alone at home. She didn't know if her husband would ever return. She had no job, no money coming in, and so she relied on growing her own produce, her own fruit and vegetables, to survive, to live. And the, four, the first autumn her husband was gone, she had a great harvest. And she thanked God that even though her circumstances were not easy, he provided for her needs. And she had played her part by preparing the ground and planting a variety of vegetables. But she believed it was God through his amazing power and love that had made the things grow. Initially, the lady was overjoyed by the amount of potatoes she had dug up one day. There were enough that she would be fed through the winter. But later that evening, as she sat down to mend some worn-out clothes, she noticed 
her wedding ring was missing. The lovely band that went around her finger was her only reminder of her husband and his love for her. Here's my wedding ring, children. I'm going to show it to you there. And a ring is a circle because it is never ending, just like the love it represents. And the lady was really sad because she'd lost that precious item. She knew immediately that it must have slipped off her finger as she dug the potatoes. She hoped she would find it over the next few months when she prepared the soil for planting more potatoes. But sadly, the ring was nowhere to be seen. The reminder of her husband and his love for her was lost. As the months passed and the war progressed, the lady's hope of her husband returning seemed to fade too. Every time she reached into the sack for a potato, she, um, every time she reached into the sack for a potato, instead of being grateful for the abundant harvest and of God's love and provision, she was reminded of the pain of losing her precious ring and the pain of her husband, who was at war. Soon harvest time came round again, and she'd worked hard again to prepare and plant, but she knew that it was God who had done the rest. Harvest reminded her of God's provision for her needs, and of his power and his love. But sadly, the potatoes still acted as a reminder her, to her of her lost wedding ring. With sadness in her heart, she took a few out of the sack and she prepared them for a stew. And when she sat down later to eat her meal, with the familiar lump in her throat that loneliness brought, soon she had more than a lump in her throat. As she bit into a potato, she felt something hard in her mouth. Thinking it was a stone, she spat it in her hand. And when she looked at it, however, she realised it was not a stone, but something perfectly round. She held it between her finger and her thumb, and she gently rubbed the potato away. This unexpected object had a hole in the middle. What could it be? She placed it in her napkin and rubbed it some more, removing all the potato that was filling it. And when she opened her napkin, her heart <gasps> skipped a beat. It was her, did you guess, wedding ring. It couldn't be. Hold on. The inside of their wedding rings had been engraved with their names. She looked carefully inside the ring, turning it towards the dim light. And there they were, her and her husband's names, Elsie and Bill. How had this happened? A potato must have grown around the ring as it formed in the soil. The young woman placed the ring back on her finger. How pleased she was to have it. Her husband was still away, but she had the ring to remind her of his love for her. So what can a potato teach us? Well, she had another reminder too. She felt as though God had used that potato to show that he understood how she felt. And God wanted her to be reminded in a very special way of his everlasting love for her. So, perhaps, children, a simple potato can be a reminder at harvest time 
for us too. We can think of all the people who work hard to prepare the soil, to plant a variety of fruits and vegetables, to harvest their crops. We can also think how the rest just happens because of God. We can thank God for all he has designed, all he has created, and how he keeps it going. And just like the lady who found the ring in her potato, maybe we can be reminded this harvest time that God made us because he loves us and he wants us to be his friends. We can thank God that he provides for us at harvest time. And we can thank God that he loves us always. We're going to finish our Harvest Church service with a prayer. Let's close our eyes and let's just be really still. And if you agree with the words said in this prayer, you can say Amen at the end. Father God, we thank you for the harvest, for all of the fruit and vegetables that help us grow and help us play and help us learn and help us to live. Help us to think about those who might be less fortunate than us right now. Help us think about those who may be feeling hungry tonight and tomorrow. And as we sit down tonight and eat our dinners, Help us to appreciate that we don't need to be hungry. Help us to appreciate what we find in front of us. Thank you for the harvest. Amen. Thank you, children. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet, low, far-off hymn that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comfort die, the Lord my Savior